Hi, my name's Dale Boyd from Agriculture Victoria, working in the area of soil moisture monitoring, and today I'm going to provide some insights into what I've learnt and um, may assist you in the placement of soil moisture probes that you're looking to invest with with uh, BCG. After being involved in uh, numerous site selections and the installation of almost 40 moisture probes within Agriculture of Victoria, I've certainly been able to pick up um, certainly some key pointers that you should be considering uh, when looking at uh, positioning a soil moisture probe on your place. However, probably the one thing that I have found is that uh, the farmers and the hosts that I've worked with have had a, a very good uh, sort of historical knowledge of how paddocks and their farms have, have performed over a number of years. And so they've had a pretty good idea of uh, uh, the paddock that they'd like to monitor. And what I can um, provide uh, is just that assistance in um, avoiding any irregularities you might want to uh, monitor and um, certainly just focus in on the, the specific point that's going to provide you with the best uh, representation of soil moisture changes on your paddock. The first important part in selecting the soil moisture monitoring um, site position is identifying the, the main soil type that's on your property. Um, and that way, uh, the reference point that is being measured is, is representative for certainly you know, a fair portion of that paddock. And you'd hope that it's also a good portion of your farm as uh, you're looking to, to get that soil texture type that is um, you know, covering um, a good majority of your farm. Now, when we look at the soil texture, obviously you can get a, a big range, but if you select that soil type that's got the biggest percentage, then you've got that reference point uh, that's gonna provide you with the insights into soil moisture changes uh, over a number of years and, and many years to come. Uh, obviously, the, all these soil types have got different water holding abilities and I think essentially that's where we want to get to at the end of the day by using this technology is that um, uh, we can establish uh, you know the the drained upper limits the the wet points at how much uh, water those soils can hold and also you know over time establish the lower limits and then um, by subtracting um, the lower limit from the drained upper limit then we've got the plant available water so that way we can then bring it back down to um, a water holding percentage or a, a millimetres available of um, soil water holding ability. I thought at this point in time it'd be worthwhile just showing some images of the install process and, and the equipment used. So this is a photo of one of the AgVic installs at um, speed. And in terms of the probe placement, uh, some, um, some rises and some um, low points in this paddock. So we're just, uh, in terms of site selection, it was just on a mid slope. Um, the telemetry unit where all the, the data is, um, is um, being collected by the moisture probe is, uh, is generally, we've found best positioned on the fence line where we can put some guarding around it with some uh, weld mesh just to protect it from stock and also uh, some vermin. Uh, the probe itself is a capacitance probe with eight sensors uh, internally positioned through that. So wherever the, the probe is positioned in the soil profile, you'll get soil moisture measurements every 10 centimetres. And in terms of its robustness, it's proven to be pretty uh, effective. And I guess that's why we're, we're really, well, I would like to emphasise the, the protection of the cabling, um, both through uh, the ground that connects it uh, from the probe position to the telemetry unit and also running up the telemetry unit. Um, you damage the, those wires, yeah, you're going to lose your, your connection to the probe. Um, and in terms of the install process, we're just looking to put the probe in with uh, uh, the least soil disturbance as possible. So there's a pilot hole that's uh, physically dug, a slurry solution that's poured into that hole, and then the capacitance probe is inserted into that hole, uh, a very neat fit that gets uh, good contact to um, 
yeah, with the moisture probe to the surrounding soil. Um, we found that the position of the probe has been about, the top of it's been 25 centimetres, so the first sensor is about 30 centimetres. Uh, while we've been selecting that depth is that you can then safely sow, um, mechanically cultivate, or any other um, uh, deep ripping or um, paddock uh, management practices without damaging the probe itself. And then we've found that um, by trenching um, and, and laying cable from the probe back to the telemetry unit at that same depth. So a ditcher is required for that. Um, we know it's all safely at that depth and you can um, proceed with confidence. Uh, I guess with this site at speed, and we do find this with um, uh, a lot of sites along the fence line, there's um, potentially a weed burden there or a, a weed burden that's different to in the paddock. So that's why we've been going out into the paddock to a to a distance, probably on an average of about 15 metres. So it's been good that um, it appears that the, the BCG program is uh, going to have a probe that's got 15 metres of, of lead or cable attached to that. And then, um, you know, accessibility to the site is also um, an important component. So if you've got a track running along the fence line, you certainly want to come out a distance from the track uh, as well. So by having that amount of lead, that will allow you to do that. So it's quite a small reference point that we're measuring with the soil moisture sensor. So um, looking to make this uh, measurement point as relevant as possible for majority of the paddock. And this is just a photo just indicating some, um, some tram lining or some traffic lines that occurred pretty consistently on the paddock. So in terms of probe placement, you're looking to come in off that fence line to a distance where you're certainly not going to be underneath a traffic line of, um, of tyres with the sewing pass or, or spray lines or anything like that. So ideally it's in a, a position of a soil that uh, doesn't have a lot of um, trafficability across the top of it. So you can get a true indication of uh, the majority of the paddock um, with the infiltration that's not um, compacted. So also just on um, available imagery and, and using it uh, to utilize and uh, make that reference point as best as possible, NDVI um, and uh, just sort of greenness uh, indexes historically can be used to certainly uh, target or maybe uh, target the areas that are average and avoid the areas that um, you know may have some implications for, for crop growth. So uh, here's just an example from last year. Obviously uh, th that was sort of exacerbating the dryness, uh, exacerbating all the potential issues for paddocks. So that would uh, potentially lead you into uh, areas to, to target that would be a good reference point for your farm. So if you've got your paddock in mind that you want to monitor, it certainly would be advantageous to incorporate all intelligence that you can capture on that paddock and whether that's from uh, an aerial view or a map of that paddock and certainly some um, uh, overlays if you've got those of, of yield maps and just not from one year but obviously you know a collection of a number of years so you can um, certainly work out um, you know where maybe a consistent performer of that paddock is I generally say the the monitoring point is not your best and not your worst part of the paddock it's about your average um, and in most cases that's got to be the case but yeah occasionally it might pop up as being the best I've also seen um, some good use of uh, EM38 maps as well. So, and if you're into precision ag and can do some paddock zoning, um, yeah, obviously looking to to monitor, um, you know, about that average uh, zone. So, just in terms of uh, what we've been able to collect in terms of this is a um, a monitoring site with Ag Vic. Uh, we've got the aerial view here of of the paddock. Um, and, and what we could pick up from the aerial view is that there's um, you know, a slight uh, discoloration indicating some differences in soil type and, and it's a heavier soil type that we know that from this, this site here. We've also got that gateway access and at times uh, it's, it's been a, 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 well, a poor performer. It's obviously got some compaction and historical issues there. Uh, we're lo certainly looking to avoid uh, going anywhere near trees. We know the drawing effect that uh, tree roots do have. And just in terms of um, 
you know, in wet years, if there's movement of water across a paddock, you know, we're just looking to avoid that. So uh, we've certainly been able to track um, flood and the movement of water across there. So in terms of this monitoring site, we've, this is the site we've selected. Uh, it can get wet in wet years, but it's uh, probably never underwater for any period of time. And then we've, we've just look up a, a yield map, we can certainly do pick up um, in a dry year, the poorer performance of the heavier soil types, the influence around uh, gateways and compaction and where we've got the, the monitoring site, it, it has come up as about average in that year. So I think we're just using all the um, information available to make that informed decision of, of where we can put that probe uh, and then we can um, start to after we do collect a, a series of data of moisture, uh, make that informed decision making um, that takes that step just from being interesting informal information data uh, to um, decision making data, which is where we're looking to head to with the investment in this technology. So I'll wrap it up after this slide, which is just uh, some images of uh, well, one monitoring site. Uh, the one on the right is the, the localised monitoring site at Birchip, but the one on the left is probably just a, maybe just a consideration for, for future planning. Uh, I, I imagine that the the setup that you're going to put in is just a weather station and one soil moisture probe. But what, what I've found, um, some good benefits in recent years is um, pairing up uh, the moisture probe sites where the uh, telemetry unit still goes on the fence line but we're measuring um, you know, both, both paddocks. Uh, yeah. So in this instance, uh, we've got the same soil type, same rainfall, but the point of difference is the perennial growth of lucin versus the annual growth of uh, crops. And so that's sort of maybe something that might, you might want to consider as a mixed uh, farming enterprise. If you're strictly cropping, um, I think we're providing, yeah, capturing some good insights into monitoring and in the same season, just uh, how the different rotations are performing and the different crop types perform in different years. And um, we can certainly, you know, uh, we've been able to track and capture yield data in the past but really haven't known exactly what's been that driver and why those yield results have occurred. So uh, this has got to be the main advantage of uh, having the moisture probe in the ground, assessing soil moisture to range of levels is just, you know, what, what's influencing uh, crop yields over a different range of uh, crop yield, uh, crop types. But anyway, hopefully that has provided you with some, um, some thought and, um, and some consideration to get that uh, reference point as, as uh, best uh, for your uh, farming situation. All the best.